It is a beautiful morning in Buena Vista today, and today we're gonna be doing a bike packing trip. So me and my buddy Ed are down here. I'm just getting ready to load up all my equipment on the bike, and uh, we're gonna do an overnighter. So we're heading up to a place called St. Elmo. It's kind of an old ghost town here in Buena Vista area. We're gonna ride up to Hancock Lake, which is kind of this high alpine lake, camp out, and then come back tomorrow morning. So, so I'm out here, I'm just loading up the bike, and this is all the stuff that I'll be bringing with me. Not a whole lot of stuff. In fact, most of it will just be kind of cameras and electronic gear for this video. Video, but Topeak sent me these new Tetra racks uh, and we're gonna be trying these out on the bike um, normally I use like a roll bag on the front and the handlebars and then a seat bag and you know what I've been noticing is that I have this full suspension bike and when you put one of those seat bags on the back you can't use the dropper because the bag comes down and it hits the tire so there's a couple ways around that but uh, Topeak sent me these out to go ahead and try so we're gonna set these up now the Tetra racks are designed for bikes that don't necessarily have uh, eyelets to put panniers and racks and that type of thing on the uh, the Tetra racks the M1 will go ahead and it's designed to uh, attach to like suspension forks um, and then we have the uh, the M2 which will go back here got the installation done on the Tetra racks both the front and the back are pretty easy so the M2 which sits on the rear it's pretty cool because they velcro down with a velcro strap and then you tighten them down with this bolt right here so it kind of pulls it tight and this rubber piece kind of holds it on there so I've got my Tetra racks set up with the uh, MTX trunk bags these are from Topeak as well so it's kind of got like this expandable top pouch up top we can organize things it's got some nice little mesh pockets some bungee cords we can put stuff on and then the sides fold out into panniers so those will kind of lock down here like that and we'll be able to fill those up all right she's all loaded up so we got everything I need in here um, I'll just kind of talk about where I put everything so I got the tent um, just some random stuff back here my uh, food kit that type of stuff in here I think there's also a sleeping pad um, in the uh, sleeping bag in here uh, some random electronics got the catadine water bottle these are pretty cool with the MTX uh, trunk bags they got these little bottle holders on the front put a bunch of the electronic stuff up front here and then in this one down here we uh, put all the clothes in here so I'm also using these toe peak bags that uh, can press down really well they got this vent so you can squish all the air out of them and then tighten it back up so they can get really small but yeah that all seems to fit into the uh, MTX trunk bags and uh, so far those tetra racks look pretty solid they're on there really good all right Ed's ready to go we haven't done a bike ride in probably a couple months the last one we did was pretty epic which was down around Buena Vista and Salida that was a hundred mile plus over a couple days lots of hike a bike and uh, today we're doing the out and back right Lollipop. Lollipop. So it'll be an overnighter. We're going to go up through St. Elmo, kind of hook around through the Alpine Tunnel system, and then camp out on top of uh, Hancock Lake, which is uh, Alpine Lake. So Ed's got his setup down here. Ed, let's go check out your ride. Let's let's see what you got going on. You're still riding the, uh, the Trek, right? Still on the Trek rigid. Yep. Fully rigid, kind of a mid-fat bike. He's got a cool setup. So you're running uh, Blackburn bags, right? Blackburn salsa on the front. Yeah, let's take a look at those. So those are pretty pretty sharp looking bags. That fit in there. Is this custom or did, can you just Stock. buy them? Stocks. That fit in there really well on the Trek. And then he's got the uh, the salsa roll bag up front. Ed's bringing his fishing pole. He's planning to do some uh, fishing up there in the Alpine Lake today. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Packed up. We're ready to go. Turn the music off. Let's go out front. Get the bike ready. just made it from Buena Vista down here to uh, Princeton Springs so that's the hot springs back here we're about to head up a little bit further up the mountain here it's pretty much just road uh, all the way up to St. Elmo's which is uh, kind of an old uh, ghost town so we'll check that out place is pretty cool and then we're on our way up to the Alpine Tunnel uh, so the views start to get really cool up there I'm gonna start hitting those Alpine views so yeah let's go uh oh what is that what is that Oh, wallet. That's pretty cool. That's crazy. 
You never know what you're gonna find out here. Ooh, there's a bunch of money in it and an ID. So after we were riding along, after we found that wallet, I seen this guy fishing in the river next to us over here. And I asked Dad, I said, what was that guy's name again? He's like, Daniel. And I was like, I think that's him back there in the river. And so we went back and sure enough, it was the guy that had lost the uh, wallet about a mile back. He said he lost it a couple days ago. We're riding the bikes after we found the wallet. <laughs> Made it up, what, a mile, Ed? About a mile, mile and a half. And I said, I seen this guy down here fish, I said, that's, that's gotta be Daniel. So this is the guy who lost the wallet. And, and you guys have no idea how great this is. <laughs> I was freaking out. And my wife's been just going, well, you dummy, you dummy. And I'm going, I don't know what happened. I don't know where I lost it. Well, awesome, man. We got we're, it. We're glad we could do that for oh, you. Listen. We'll get him back. You know, I don't know how to reward you. Uh, there's no reward necessary. There's no reward. It's Listen, just, uh, I'm, I'm, don't fall. Catch some fish. Gotta be rewarded. Uh, oh man. You happy are... that you guys get, that you got it. <laughs> On the side of the road. <laughs> You're kidding. Yeah. yeah. Alright, well. Listen, thank you guys so much. No I can't problem. tell you. <laughs> Let me, like, buy you a beer or something. <laughs> we wouldn't make it to where we were going if we drank it right now, Daniel. We gotta go way up there, so. Listen, I, I can't really thank you enough. Yeah, and, glad we found it and found and, you. Yeah, I tell you what, yeah, we yeah, can do that was, for you. It's like, save your day anyway. Did you Zip see it in that pocket now. No kidding. <laughs> so, that's just kind of one of those cool things where we were able to get somebody back their property that you find. I mean, that would suck to lose your wallet and not yeah, get that back. Probably 150 bucks in cash, 160 Yeah. Ruin your weekend. I mean, he's out there trying to have a good time, so I was glad we were able to do that. That's pretty cool. So we're just pulling into uh, St. Elmo, and uh, it is an old abandoned mining town, I believe. Let's check it out. So we're at the far end of St. Elmo, and uh, St. Elmo, if if you guys aren't familiar with it, is an old, I believe, mining town. It's a ghost town, so this is basically all empty buildings. They've been here for a long time, and uh, everybody kind of comes up here to check these buildings out, and they're really cool. We're doing the last little bit up to Hancock Lake. And we finally hit probably about 10,000 foot in elevation and we're starting to get a lot of that beautiful fall color on the aspen trees. Check this out. Lots of gold. It's pretty awesome, huh, Ed? Can't beat it. So we made it to Hancock Lake. This is as far as we were going for today. And uh, we rolled in at about six o'clock. So we're a little bit later. The weather's starting to come in because we're about 12,000-ish feet. So we're alpine up here. There aren't too many trees. We're not, we're not really uh, protected. It's pretty exposed. And uh, so we decided to throw up the uh, tents really quick, kind of get camp set up. Um, we got Lake Hancock out here, which is just amazing. It's really beautiful. Got Ed's tent over here. Ed's uh, rocking a Nemo tent, and uh, that's a one-person tent, ultralight. Super easy to set up, super easy to take down. Ed, you like your tent? Love it. Yep, pretty good tent right there. This is mine over here. This is a North Face Stormbreak, and uh, these are pretty cheap. I actually think I picked this up for just over a hundred bucks. It was on sale. Um, I think it was last year's model, but it's an ultralight one person as well. And uh, the uh, the Tetra racks from Topic, I mean, did an outstanding job. Granted, most of what we rode today was gravel riding, that type of thing. Uh, tomorrow's going to be a little more single track um, with the Alpine Loop and then heading back into BV. So we'll really be able to test those. Um, but yeah, I think the rack system worked way better than I expected them to. Um, you know, I, coming from using the, the handlebar bag and a normal seat bag on here to using a rack system, I thought it was going to be kind of strange, but really they held up. So tomorrow we're doing the Alpine Loop. We'll probably try to get up 
kind of early, uh, not too early because there isn't gonna be a whole lot of sun and I guarantee you being almost October and it's actually it's starting to rain us right now, it's gonna be probably pretty cold tomorrow morning. So we might sleep in just a little bit, wait till that sun kind of pops up. But uh, the plan is to do the Alpine Tunnel. It's about another 30 mile loop, a lot more single track, um, a lot of cool features out there. I think this is where we're gonna cut it off for the night. So we're gonna talk to you guys tomorrow.